wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. So he says, we were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past, and a lot of us can identify with this, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now, who's that? That's Satan. The spirit, listen to what it says, the spirit that now, right now, worketh in the children of disobedience. So the things that we see come up against God, the things that we see happening in the world that's disobeying God's word, the Bible says that that is Satan's spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Eat up Mondays. Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. It is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another Eat Up Mondays. Just want to say thank you guys for everything that you've been doing. Just continue, guys, to subscribe to the channel. Continue to pray for us. Continue to leave your comments, your testimonies. Um, we truly do appreciate it. All of the uh, donations. Um, we definitely appreciate that. Um, the Some of you guys have bought some t-shirts uh, from the uh, store that we have. Truly appreciate that. I know a lot of times I don't talk about those things or mention about donations or, you know, just putting it out there that we do have an opportunity for people to donate that want to donate. But the, all of that type of stuff is in the description. Most of the time we're just hopping on here, just trying to share some encouraging words to keep those of us that are in the faith strong and those that are on their way here or that God is is touching and dealing with, you know, to just make that decision to just surrender all to him. So without further ado, guys, the meal is set. It is on the table. I'm hungry. You're hungry. So let's dig in. And speaking of salvation and God's love, we've been talking about that a lot lately, even a little bit about why God has not on the last podcast, why God has not come back yet. Uh, there's a scripture uh, in Peter where, you know, it says that men count God not coming back as slackness, but it's not that God is slack, but it's because of his long suffering towards us word, meaning he hasn't come back because he desires to see us saved. And I just wanted to kind of stay along those lines, just share a couple of scriptures with you to encourage you, especially those of you out there that God is dealing with your heart. You know, something's going on in your life. You can't quite put your hand on it. And a lot of times that's just God dealing with you, um, revealing things to you, revealing himself to you, you know, just waiting for you to just surrender all, just put your hands up and say, Lord, do with me what you will, you know, so I'm here to encourage you guys. You know, I'm here to encourage those of us that are in the faith to continue to stand strong and just continue to remind us of God's love. And some people will say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm already saved. I don't need to be reminded of God's love, but we do sometimes because look, look how many people we know that were saved and talked about Christ until they were blue in the face. And then you looked up and they walked away. They felt God let them down or, you know, things of that nature. So no, we're going to continue to on this channel, continue to encourage those that are not saved to get saved and encourage those that are saved to stay saved, to, to keep your hand in God's unchanging hand. Don't walk away from them. Continue to abide in them. Ephesians chapter two, and I'm going to be reading through these, just something to encourage you guys and something to think about. Ephesians chapter two, verse one says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. How many know we were dead in trespasses and sins? And especially those of us that are saved will understand these scriptures even clearer. But those of you that are not saved, listen to what he's saying. Among whom also, oh, excuse me, verse two, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. So he says we were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past, and a lot of us can identify with this. We walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now, who's that? That's Satan. The spirit. Listen to what it says. The spirit that now, right now, worketh in the children of disobedience. So the things that we see come up against God, the things that we see happening in the world that's disobeying God's word. The Bible says that that is Satan's spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Verse three among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. These are the things that we were doing and were by nature. We were by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. And I love how Paul 
is describing this because he's not leaving himself out. He's not trying to act like, you know, he never been there and done that, that he never was in that position. And that's so beautiful because we need more people that are saved to, you know, uh, when they're explaining Christ or, or they are witnessing to, to be transparent like this. Like, listen, I, I did those same things. You know, I had those same lusts of the flesh. I fulfilled those same desires that were in my flesh and in my mind. And it just reminded me of a a comment that was left on our last eat up Mondays where a person, they went in about something and just showed no mercy, but yet they supposed to be saved and, and loving as God loves. And we're not talking about winking at sin. We're not talking about uh, none of those type of things. We know that sin will land you in hell. We know that the Bible says, shall you continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So we never wink in that sin. We never encourage in sin. If you're in sin right now, you need to repent and whatever it is you're doing, you need to stop because there is always consequences to our sins, to our actions, right? But I just love how Paul is being transparent here, not trying to be big headed, not trying to, um, you know, act like he's greater than the individuals that he's talking to. It's like, no, been there and done that. But, but verse four, but God, we've been there and done that, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love. And if you have the spirit of God in you, you should have some mercy within you or be able to show other people mercy. But sometimes that's not what we see, but he says, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, his great love, right? The Bible says that, that he loved us before we even loved him. Amen. We didn't even know how to love him. We didn't even know, you know, who God was, but the Bible says he loved us before we could love him. But it says for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, I don't want anybody to miss that. It says right here in the scriptures that he loved us even when we were dead in sins. He have quickened us together with Christ. This is a key for those of us that are saved and those of you that are not, that I'm just believing that you're going to surrender all to Christ. It says, by grace, ye are saved. It is by grace, by the grace of God, and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace, here it is again, are ye saved through faith? Through our faith in God, through our belief in Jesus Christ, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. These words are key, guys. It is the gift of God. And I want to pause right there for a second so that we can constantly be reminded that you did not save yourself. It is by his grace and through your faith that you are saved. It is not of yourselves. It goes on to say it is the gift of God. And I think it's so important that we are continually reminded of that so that when we go out and we witness to people, when we're talking online to people, that we don't talk down to them, that we don't talk like we saved ourselves. Well, I just decided one day to get saved. No, you did not. The Bible is very clear. You cannot come to Christ Jesus if the Lord does not, if the Father does not draw you. If the Lord does not draw you, you cannot come to Christ. Amen. So if you are saved today, filled with the Holy Ghost, loving on God, understanding the scriptures, you know, praying, having communion with God and all those things. It is by his grace and you need to give him glory. It had nothing to do with anything that you did, how good you was, the decisions that you made, who you gave to, none of that stuff. It was by his grace that we are saved through faith and that not of yourselves or ourselves. It is the gift of God. Why, Jesus? Why is it the gift of God? Why, Paul? Why is it the gift of God? Verse 9, not of works. Why? Lest any man should boast. See, God 
obviously he's the creator of all, so he's the, he's the wisest of all, but he knows human nature. He created us. He knows human nature. If this thing was about work, you know, we know some people who work harder than others. Oh man, they, they will be boasting away. Oh, look, I'm, I'm doing better than you. I'm, I'm a lot farther than you in salvation. You know, I'm a lot farther than you in Jesus. He said, no, 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 not of works, lest any man should boast. There will be no boasting when it comes to salvation. If you are saved, it is by the grace of God. It is because God drew you to the Lord. If you are maintaining any type of lifestyle, it is because of the convictions of the Holy Ghost and the conviction of his word and the understanding of his word through the Holy Ghost. It has nothing to do with you. And and, and why do I say that? Because if you be honest with yourself, you would have never been here if it was left up to you. Me personally, I would have never been where I am today if it was left up to me. What do I mean by that? I was having a great time, even though I was dying and it was killing me and, and I could have lost my life. Many a times I was having a good time doing it because I did not know any better. So if it was left up to us, we would still be doing the same things that it felt good, but that were hurting us. But God came in, showed us mercy, showed us grace, gave us the opportunity to get saved. And here we are today. And those of you that are not saved, this is, this is the process we went through to get here. So if you feel God is dealing with you, if you feel, you know, yourself, you know, looking at videos like this and, and, and asking questions about the word and wondering about God, don't take that for granted. That's how many of us came to him ourselves because he begins to draw you one plant, one waters, God gives the increase. So don't take it for granted. Stop listening to all the negativity around you, all that. Start to surround yourself with the scriptures, with the word of God, with people that you know that you can trust, that love God. You you watch their lives even when you were doing what you were doing, the grace, the mercy they showed you. Listen, they, they might have been honest with you. Listen, you need to chill with that, but they showed you grace and mercy. They showed you love. They told you about the Lord. Stick to them. Talk to them. Pray with them because God wants to save you. We are in crunch time. A lot of things are going on, and I know that God... God is bringing his children home. And if that is you, you don't want to just keep lingering and keep waiting. You hear God knocking at the door. He's tugging at your heart. Surrender to him. The scripture says that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's that's what the scripture says. Everything else that comes after that is a process and God will bring you through that process. But if God is dealing with you and tugging at your heart, please do not. I repeat, please do not take it for granted. But let's read verse eight through 10 and we're going to close. It says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. We got to keep, let's, let's go back. We got to keep harping on that. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. So once again, and I got to keep harping on this because that comment that was left on last Monday's video, I, I was like, wow, after all that was said on last Eat Up Mondays, you would come on here and comment this and try to call yourself being led by the spirit or or trying to convict us through the scriptures. It's like, no, we, we know what the scripture says about that, but where's the grace? Where's the mercy? What does the scripture say, say to those that are in sin and that are sinning? but we didn't see any of that. So I want to make this clear. Once again, it is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Verse nine, not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. Not man, not our cousin, not our aunt, not our uncle. No, God before ordained that we should walk in, in them. Amen. That is, is that he created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That's how we are created. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus in him. Remind, remember, we're supposed to abide in him. We abide in him. We are one with him unto good works. When you are one with Christ and you are moving by the spirit, you're going to do the work of God, which God have been before ordained that we should walk in them. I know sometimes it's rare that you guys see me pumped up and amped up, but listen, this is what this whole 
walk is about. Everything that God did for us, this is what it's about. It's about us getting saved. It's about us giving uh, uh, him our lives and living for him. I just was talking to the church recently. Um, I got a chance to teach Bible study at the church. Um, and I was just saying to them, just like I say to uh, my friends that we have a lot of, you know, dialogue about the scriptures. Like, listen, if you are saved, you are living the dream. Why do I say that? Because you know the one that created all things. You have the opportunity to, to talk to him every single day, to hear his word every single day, to open up his word and not only open it up and read it, but understand it. Like you cannot take that for granted. So if God has saved you, continue to remain in him, continue to walk strong in him, do the things that you need to do to remain and to stay. And if you know he is calling you, surrender to him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm telling you from experience that it'd be the best thing that you ever did. But guys, know that I love you. We're going to continue to talk about God's love. We're not going to allow these people that come in as wolves in sheep clothing to try to discourage us. No, we're going to continue to talk about the word of God, the love of God, the gospel, and how he wants to save. Because guess what? The, 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 the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Right now, God, listen, he's saving. He's saving contrary to what you see on TV, contrary to what you're hearing, God is moving. So we're going to continue to stay in that movement and watch him as he continues to save. But guys, once again, know that I love you. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.